Well, hello everybody. It is Brian Clark here today with you going over month two with the Money Max account. Now, listen, I've been chatting to you all about this program and how fantastic it is. I'm going to have my wife uh, come on the next time I record to kind of give you a perspective of someone who hasn't uh, seen this before or used before and sort of how it's helped her and what it's been like using it. Um, because since I've I sold these things for a, a very many years, uh, it's you know I have a different perspective on it. So I want to kind of give a perspective of someone who's never used this kind of thing before and sort of their experience with it. But let me show you the progress so far. I mean, it's super. I'm super excited. I mean, it's so much fun. Uh, and, and let me tell you why. Because here's the thing: it's taken getting out of debt and saving money and, and kind of changing your future and almost like gamified it. For those of you who don't know what gamification is, it's basically taking mundane tasks and turning it into a, a video game to make it a little more entertaining. So how they did that is this toolbar at the top, as you all can see, is extremely inspiring. And what I mean by that is it's one of those things where when you come in and you do things and we've had you know conversations between um, herself and, and me, that kind of go over uh, you know the budget and, and where we're going and if we're going a little too far right on one side or too far left on another uh it, it has been super helpful in sort of staying within the scope now it's not saying it's making us cheap but it's letting us know what our actions are causing and what i mean by that you know i'm going to show you some examples here but you know once again just so to recap with you for those of you who don't know this program will help you get out of all your debts, mortgage, credit card debt, car loans, everything, one third to one half the time uh, using a program. They have spent millions of dollars of developing this. This is not just some fancy Excel spreadsheet that you can put together because it's not static. And, and I'm gonna show you sort of an example of that as well. So what you see here, you usually get a three month sort of window. This is month basically about a month and a half in for, for me. Um, we are currently, uh, I purchased this last month, about midway through and started updating it. So I'm about a month and a half in, and let me tell you what it's already done for me. Uh, we had set a bar of, uh, I wanted about $4,500 in a savings account just as like a safety net. Um, we have done that. We have done a large funds transfer to a big credit card that we have that we're working on paying a balance off. Uh, we're about to go get a home equity line of credit, which I'm super excited about because that's going to accelerate this further. I'll do another video about that. But in, in the short period of time that we've had it, we've already saved tons of money and it's gone all where it's supposed to go. And it was very, oh, sorry, I just put my elbow in my cat's ear. It was very simple to do. Um, so what you see on the screen here is sort of, I pre-set up a budget. Uh, and you can see here in this budget, I list a bunch of different stuff uh, as far as you know what we have. I'm gonna probably rework this. I'm gonna call the home office and kind of get their advice. But uh, they help me set all this up. I, I basically, all regular bills that come out, um, you can kind of have reoccurring and set up so that you have a regular kind of budget that you estimate um, that you'll use. And then I have home services, you know, I have pool guy cleaning people, uh, uh, lawn care and like a pest control. And then I have this big unitemized budget right here. What I think I'm going to do is the food budget I have set up weekly and what I call Uber abuse um, is uh, weekly as well. I think I'm gonna change that to just one big category, kind of like unitemized budget. Because, uh, and I'm going to explain to you why here in a second, why I may do that, is um, that it's just, it seems to be a little easier um, not having to, uh, basically I'm allotted $150 a week for groceries. So if I go over that, it'll log it, but it won't change the balance in the future, like the next week to go down to show you that you're getting close to your budget. So what ends up happening is you may overspend inadvertently because even though you might have overspend the week before, it doesn't change the number. When you do the unitemized, or when you do the budget like once a month, like a total, so if instead of I did 150 every week, I did uh, $600 a month, that total will actually go down as you use it. And I'll show you how that works. So let's take a look at my action plan. So, so far, um, we're mostly done with this month. 
Uh, I have a few things that are coming out um, soon. Uh, but as you can see, my grocery budget, or budget, remember I said it was $150 a week. I've already, I, I since I've already overspent on this week's grocery budget, I've had to like pull from next week's. And that's part of what I'm talking about, how it's kind of, it's it's giving me an extra, it's not really giving me a good total. Whereas you see my uncategorized um, budget that I put here for just random stuff, that goes down. Because originally it's 33 it's three thousand dollars a month, I believe. You see right here. So every time I do something that's not really got a preset category, um, I go into um, I go into this and I you know update what it is. You know I change the number here. I pick the category of what it is. As you can see, it's got education. You know whatever it may be, food and dining. Um, if it's just some random doctor visit or something like that, you can kind of go in here and update it. And then what you do uh, when uh, for your regular reoccurring bills that are always the same, it's going to have this final transaction box checked. Uh, but when you have like a budget like this, you, as long as you leave this unchecked, what it's going to do is it's going to directly um, minus out from the total so that uh, it, it won't erase it all. So it'll just kind of tick the clock down on the number here when you're doing that. So... Um, what's really nice about that, and that's why I think I'm going to switch the grocery budget to be similar to that. So that way I know if I'm going out shopping to my grocery, I can kind of see where I'm at. Now, I also have this quick window here where I can hit my budget overview, which is kind of handy. It does have all my budgets here in my expense folders. So for utilities, we're doing good. The utilities were lower. Entertainment, don't have much left. We're way over on food. Um, and that's mainly due to the grocery budget. We had a big, uh, big grocery thing going on, uh, but we also updated a lot of our, you know, utility stuff and, and all that. So you kind of get an idea of overview. But this not being able to see it on the screen all the time um, will let you go further south quickly. Now here's the cool thing: is you know, you may break the budget on certain items, uh, but also perform way better on others. So for instance. The uncategorized section. Last month, we still had a thousand dollars that we did not use uh, in our unitemized or uncategorized section. So we were able to, you know, complete that month and really be uh, in the plus positive in a, in a very big way, which was great. Um, so al although we may have blown the like grocery budget, that coming under or you know our gas budget has drastically changed because neither one of us are driving a whole lot. Um, so that's almost a, I think I did uh, 60 bucks or I'm sorry 80 bucks for each and we're barely using 30 a piece a month so what that does is that you know if we got $160 allotted and we're barely using 60 that leaves us $130 that we're under budget so what that'll do is it'll constantly recalculate sort of those money movements that it has you do as you execute some of these items that come through. So uh, those are just a few kind of things. Obviously water bill is gonna be different. So you know when we get it, we just go in there and update it. And it's super simple to do. So if I jump into account history here, you'll see all the things that I've clicked through here. So you can get an idea of what we've done. So these are, this is basically um, my results for uh, the last month. And I gotta move over a couple too. So you can see each time I'll do fast food, fast food, you know, we have to fix that. But see, you'll start seeing patterns of where you can improve, which is really nice too. Um, but, uh, you know, I label fast food as, you know, anything um, that's Uber or whatever. Uh, but, yeah, so you can categorize all kinds of stuff here so that you know where your money's going. I blew the home services budget because uh, my pool filter needed to be cleaned and it was like an extra hundred and some odd dollars. And then my cleaning crew forgot to cash a check from last month where I was under budget and they cashed it this month. So it's blowing my budget out, but I was under budget last month, so it evens itself out. But what's really nice here, Greeny CC is a credit card, you know, Greeny credit card. Um, so not only did I manage to save up uh, over $4,500 of my savings, but just last month, it told me to move $5,550.25 to pay down my credit card and uh, it was you know it was 
really interesting because it goes like to the penny. So it's really focusing on that credit card right now as a, as a total um, <clears throat> because it's, it's wanting to eliminate that. Now, what I'm planning on doing when I get that home equity line is I'm going to take that credit card balance and throw it into the home equity line because it has a much lower interest rate. That's going to significantly speed up my years to pay off. As you guys can see here, I'm going to be saving over $90,000 of interest. I've already eliminated 60, just under $6,400 worth of interest already in a month and a half uh, by paying that large balance towards credit card bills and stuff like that. <clears throat> and it's going to continue to eliminate interest and my payoff time of my home with a brand new mortgage. If you watch the first video I posted, my first payment was this month on the first. I'm going to be done in 5.2 years on this date. Now, I'm hoping to beat that. I'm going to beat that. Let's let's be real. Because what I'm starting to see is using the software program is that I'm getting very competitive with it. You know, <clears throat> when uh, we're going on vacation uh, before the 4th, so it's not like I'm, you know, being a hermit and not doing anything. Uh, I'm just making better decisions because I have I update this once a week. It takes me about 10 minutes to do, and I go, I have my, like, you know, my bank <clears throat> account on one side and this on the other, and then I just kind of, update the line items so it doesn't take a whole lot of time but it has vastly changed the way I think about things uh, which is really awesome for me especially and then I can go in here and look at the reports so some of uh, what I do I didn't have much information last time I showed you all this so I want to show you what it looks like now so if I show budget um, it's gonna show you you know, here's the breakdown of all a lot of the stuff. So you can see income folder, expenses and accounts and funds transfers last month. Uh, and then this month, it'll break down what I've entered in so far. So you can see, you know, all this stuff, you know, and I'm sharing this with you all. I'm not, you know, I'm not hiding anything. This isn't some, you know, uh, magical, mysterious thing. I'm using this and doing this and it is working. Because here's the thing, folks, is that everybody says they want to get out of debt. A lot of people don't do anything or they do something for a short period of time and then it just gets too much or, you know, they don't see any results. Megan saw this number. I'm going to have her tell you all in her own words the next video I do. But when she saw this number, it really started to sink in what this software program is capable of. And when she was done and she sees this number, when she knows we just got a brand new mortgage, uh, on a refi it was very exciting okay so there's there's so many other things that kind of <sighs> change the ball game when you're on something like this that uh, you it's hard to explain in words until you're on it honestly um, so as I'm going through so I just did a major you know 5500 and change plus move to a large credit card uh, balance that we have Hold on, let me see if I can show you where it is, because I don't care. I'll show you my, my stuff. I'm not shy. Uh, so yeah, here we go. So basically, we have our two car loans uh, right here. What's left, um, oh, I'm sorry, that's not it. This car loan, the Lincoln and the Genesis, so about $4,800 a piece. I'm really good about buying cars, um, and uh, I get them cheap. You know, we got a Lincoln MKX and a 2011 Genesis, but I, both of our payments barely breached 300 bucks, and part of that is because when I sold this before, I know the ramifications of having a high, high car payment, and uh, so now I do like half down, and then I do so that I have low payments, and it's really been helping. But look at this. So we, uh, this card was actually over its limit when we started. Now it, it was just a lack of paying attention to the numbers, because you know we could have cleared it and done some stuff but I was like you know what let's get on this program let's do what it says to do so now uh, you know we're way well below the balance uh, the payment is changed uh, because the balance has gone down so I'll need to update that but you know we were over 19,000 when this started check the previous video I think I show it there and we're already below 13,000 now but this is a pretty high interest rate it's not the highest I know some of you may have one of those that are in the 20s but it's pretty high look at all my other interest rates 2.65 2.0 then my mortgage is pretty low, um, and so that's that's pretty high. So it's kind of gunning for this one, and gunning for this one first, because what it wants to do is it wants to free up that discretionary income to kind of compound into the others. Now very soon I'm going to be swapping out my car for a different vehicle, 
So it's going to kind of change the numbers again. But uh, I can kind of put it in here ahead of time and see, you know, what it's looking like. So you can sort of keep an eyeball on, and here's what it says I have in my savings right now and in the checking. And once, you know, what we do, since I'm a 1099, I only pay myself twice a month, and uh, I pay myself about half of what I make, so I don't, so I have enough money for taxes and everything like that. So it really helps um, operating that way for those of you who are 1099, and it really changed the way our family kind of did stuff. So yes, could I go in and like wipe a lot of this stuff out automatically? Yes, I could, but then I wouldn't have any safety nets for my business. So this really changed when I saw that I could do this on way less income, it really took a lot of stress out, uh, which was hugely important. So let's go back to the action plan. Now that you guys saw the goods there, like I said, uh, you know, when you're calling and chatting with me, we're going to go over some of this stuff with you. So, it, you know, my whole thing is, is if I can't show you all how it works in my stuff, then I, I, you know, I don't deserve to ask you. I don't care. I'll show you guys all my stuff. You know, I'm here to, like, get people out of debt, honestly. That's, that's what I'm gaming for. So I have a few things coming out. Yep, gamers. I got Gamefly and all that stuff. So as the month continues, because right now it's the 23rd, um, I got to double check and make sure some of these payments that come out, I'll go through and like ex hit execute when they do come out. I don't believe uh, the Bank of America card came out, so I have to double check with Megan because that's a, her, a card that she has separately that I can't see. But um, yeah, I'll go through and update all this stuff. But I want to show you kind of like a fresh month. So this a fresh month is um is here so i haven't updated anything here so you can see all my bills kind of laid out and how they look and kind of go through and i just go through and execute and update them and stuff like that and here's my car payments um you know the credit card bill stuff and then right here in the middle of next month it says transfer 821 dollars 11 over to savings so it's super specific about the amount Really, and if you have a good month or, or a bad month, um, it will adjust. Because here you can see my normal disbursement is $3,300. You can see, Brian. But I lowered it this month just because I wanted to see what it would do. I wanted to, you know, COVID and everything like that. I'm being super cautious, so I'm changing some of my stuff just to make sure I'm safe, which I am. I have some great deals closed and stuff like that. So, But I also just wanted to see what it would do. So this number, this eight thirty or twenty one eleven, prior to me changing it, was like fourteen hundred and fifty two and change. So when I cut my income in half, that I, the paycheck that I'm going to take, it adjusted accordingly, which is really really cool to the number, so that you don't overspend or you don't put yourself in a bad spot. That's the plus, guys and gals, is that you can have bad months, you can have good months. It's going to adjust to maximize to the greatest potential with what you have. And it'll start showing you places of pain and issue. Like, you know, if it really started getting tight or things, you know, uh, started getting nuts, you know, I got, a, you know, mowing company I can get rid of, I can get rid of the HBO, I can get rid of Audible. You know, there's a lot of different things you can start dialing back if you really need to be, pay close attention. And, you know, some of those things you can do anyway, just to see kind of how it works. But you can see uh, how it all lays out in full um, month to month. So then, you know, we go into August. And look, in August, it's having me move $1,736.62 into my savings in the middle of the month. So what it's doing is because I said I wanted that $4,500, like, safeguard, is that it's building up money in that savings. And then when it gets to a certain level, uh, it's going, it'll time it. And it'll transfer a bulk amount, like the $5,550, over to the credit card or the other Bank of America card um, and have a big move to kind of cancel out the interest and accelerate uh, that balance down so that I'm getting out of debt. Now, how it works a little differently, because right now I only have a checking and savings account, which it works with. But when I get that home equity line of credit, um, because I have not even uh, my my mortgage is less than half of what my house is worth. So what's really cool is I have a lot of equity that I can go do that. So when I get the home equity line, it's gonna calculate when to borrow against that home equity line as I'm paying it down to pay a big chunk out of the mortgage to cancel interest at a very low 
interest charge on that home equity line and it'll you know pay it down quickly as well so it works a little different if you have a home equity line it will accelerate that payoff time because you can borrow money cheaply like you can borrow $35 in interest on a home equity line to pay down $23,000 on your primary mortgage and if you don't understand that watch the first video it shows you uh, all about that so it, once I get the home equity line set up I'm gonna show you a live example anyway so you can wait till then so as you can see it continues to do what it said it was gonna do and I have two transfers both on different days both in different amounts it's not the same day the first time I did the transfer it was later in the month um, so it doesn't it doesn't follow a uh, boxed uh, sort of game plan because it adapts as you update this information and as you're inputting data it's constantly recalculating and changing when that time frame is and that is the beauty of how the program works because now you can sort of make those adjustments and um, see some acceleration in that time because there is nothing cooler than seeing this payoff date get sooner and this number go down and this number actual cancellation of interest go up faster because that's that that's part of what's missing when you do this stuff on your own if you have an Excel spreadsheet I mean props to you if you're sending a little extra or doing bi-weekly payments that's great but you know are you really seeing the benefit do you actually like you know there's no continuing motivation when times are tight do you continue to do that and when they get back to normal do you go back to doing that you know I see a lot of folks that are refinancing to 15 year mortgages and everything that's great I do loans as well folks so I'm not gonna say that's terrible that's great but now you've obligated yourself to double the monthly payment almost when I'm paying the same low payment of eleven hundred and fifty one dollars and I'm gonna pay it off faster than you so when times get tight, who's going to have a better chance of surviving? Me or you with double the size payment? Think about that. So there's a lot that goes into this. There is a game plan that is good for you, and it is my job to help you find that. Being that I'm a realtor, being that I'm a mortgage broker, being that I sell this program and I'm using it, being that I have been out of debt in my previous years for the longest time, and I'm like incurring debt now to sort of ramp up my credit again and everything like that is uh, I'm, I'm kind of back in the debt game but it's going away super fast and everyone always asks me Brian how do you do all that how do you do that this is how I do it this is one way there's there's a I do a lot of other things like I, I buy cars differently than other people I do a lot of different stuff but at the end of the day having a game plan and one that's laid out for you and you just adhere to it it takes me zero thought 10 minutes a week and I am gonna kill it and save tons of money and interest just by updating a software program that's that's how cool this is and uh, I'm gonna be getting that rental property here soon too as well and all I gotta do is update a software program so if that's something that interests you you want to learn more feel free to hit me up you, know, you can send me uh, information at info at Brian Clark sells homes and uh, or call the number that I'll pop up here down below and yeah let me run an analysis let me show you because an analysis is super cool yeah I'll show you it again let me see if I can find it real quick for you all all right so this is what started it off this is what you what I can do for you okay uh, this is a good my good buddy Brian uh, Brian's in this business as well um, and he he ran the analysis with me you can see the date April 28 of 2020 so to, like I said I wouldn't lie to you just last month so this is what it said to me this is what my analysis said and this is what tipped me off okay so I got my mortgage debt I got my loans I got my credit cards and you know all you know all this stuff in here just as a guesstimate of um, you know and, and here is big kicker okay I'm gonna save on average hundred and one thousand dollars in interest these are the stats side by side payoff times my projected payoff time is six years okay so that initially when I started that's that's what it said I'm already ahead of that which is false awesome I'm ahead of that by you know ten months and uh, I plan on making that even more so um, but the the big thing is is that 
you know, think about it being debt free in six years, five years, whatever it may be for you. Even nine versus 25, 20, 30, it's astronomical. You can't save fast enough to outweigh the interest you're paying on a mortgage. That's the thing they don't teach you. Uh, some of you may know that I used to do retirement planning and stuff like that. There's no index, there's no nothing that's gonna save up money faster than you can pay off debt. So if you can do a little bit of both at the same time, that's ideal. Uh, so for those of you who are doing that already, congrats. Uh, but this is a way to accelerate that even better. There are better ways to do things than what you're doing now. If debt has always been an issue for you, if you just can't get a hold of it, or maybe if you're even pretty good at it, if you want to know categorically that you are going in the right direction and have visual evidence every time you open your software program and see where you're going, let me know. Because I can do one of these for you and show you how much money you can save. It has already paid for itself in the first month and a half. I mean, that's ridiculous. That should tell you something. There's not a lot of things that you buy these days that you get your money back that quickly. And it, sometimes it sounds too good to be true, but that's why I'm showing you everything I got, folks. I got nothing to hide. I'm showing you all my personal stuff. So... I plead with you all, especially during all these crises and all this nutty stuff going on, please, please hear me. <laughs> Get a handle on this stuff because you will be so much happier not having that weight on your shoulders and be able to do what you want to do. I mean, I don't plan on staying in this house uh, forever. It's going to be a rental for me. But by the time I'm going to move out, I'm going to almost own it completely, which is crazy. So when I do rent it, it's going to be pure profit. Thanks for tuning in. As always, you got any questions, reach out to me. Love you all, and see you on the next one. Bye now. Brian Clark out.